All right, welcome back to Understanding Design Thinking and People-Centered Design. We are now getting ready to embark on the last part of the journey. Um, we have covered problem discovery, we've covered research and analysis, we've covered concepting and building, and now we are moving on to the section, uh, to section four, testing, refining, and pitching usability testing, refining and pitching. So we discovered how to, uh, what is the right problem to solve and understand how we solve that problem through bringing users into the process in research and analysis. And then based on our findings and our insights and everything, we started with conceptualizing those ideas and uh, trying to build a concept and build a story around the product that we're trying to put out for people to use uh, through the story and the accompanying storyboard which would explain it as well as the prototype. So we have come to a point where we've created a prototype of our idea, a representation in three dimension or in a version that is able to explain how it interacts with the user and how the user interacts, um, you know, the, the successive parts of the product. So we are at this point where um, you know we've created our prototype. Now we are going to move on to testing that prototype, testing that prototype with people. So we will learn how to test, then based on that, how to refine and thereafter how to enhance our design. And the last part of this section, we will also learn how to define our pitch, as in how do we communicate our design? How do we, now that our design is, you know, taken some shape, how do we start speaking to people about it? Okay. So usability testing, refine and enhance our design and then define the pitch. Okay. These are the five subsections in this section where in the first section we will speak about the importance of testing with people. Why don't we just you know create our design and then uh, create more refined versions of it, figure out the details, manufacture it and put it out in the market um, and, and just f test it just before it gets released in the market. Why don't we do that and instead why do we feel that it's important to bring the people into this fold early on, um, you know, right in the beginning, beginning of the process, right? Then we will speak about testing your design with people. What are the uh, mechanics of uh, testing with people? How do you bring people in? How does that whole process work? Then we will speak about how the usability testing is actually conducted, the, the nitty gritty of the testing. Then we will speak about how do you record results. You know, you do your testing and then there's findings out of that. Um, you know, that your design fared well in some things, did not fare well in some things, people were confused with something, people absolutely hated something else, uh, and people were, you know, just sailed smoothly through something else. So uh, we use all of those findings uh, based on how people reacted to, um, not just reacted, it's actually how they performed on the design. And we use that to enhance our design and then after enhancing we retest and we refine the design. Okay? So this is a cycle that we do several times uh, over the course of the prototype and the prototype keeps getting better and better. right? And it, get, it starts to get closer and closer to what the final product is going to be like. And then finally, we'll speak about creating a pitch for your design, just brief uh, inputs and insights on how do you speak about your design? How do you communicate your design, speak or otherwise? So let's now get started with the first part, which is the importance of testing with people. And remember, this is taking off from the point where your prototypes are now ready. Your prototypes are ready, they are paper prototypes, they are rough prototypes, they are rapid prototypes, quick prototypes, quick and dirty is what we call 
uh, them in many occasions. So it's not it, by any stretch of the imagination something that has finesse in it, right? And now they are ready to be taken to the people. So let's look at what um, it means as far as the importance of testing with people goes, right? So this is a don't take this literally. Usability test testing can save your life, but it's more a lighthearted way of saying, okay, maybe so it won't save your life, but what will it do for you? It certainly can keep you out of the emergency room in the hospital due to the stress induced heart attack you are about to have because you have no idea whether or not your customers can actually use the thing you just poured your life into building. Now, those of you who are in industry and work on products uh, and know what it feels like, what it takes to roll a product out the door and how much of a stressor it can be and how much effort, especially as the launch date draws closer, you know how crazy it gets and how much of uh, stress is in everyone's life. And at that point, if you have questions like, uh, oh my God, I wonder whether people are going to be able to make sense out of this. I wonder whether they're going to like this. I wonder they're going to be able to use it. If you have questions like that at that point, it is too late. It is what it is and you can't do anything about it. But usability testing can save your life. If you've done this, you know, through the product development phase, as we know, as you go through the costs keep rising okay so what we're trying to do is do as much of the testing and elimination of the risks as possible in the if you look at this as cost and this is time right so we're trying to do as much of this as possible in the early days when the costs to make changes is very very low so also to keep in mind the thing you just poured your life into building. You know that when we create products and as I said towards the launch and it, it, through the entire thing, it's a hugely um, big commitment of your energy, time, effort and no, not to mention of course money and lots of uh, things that are at stake, right? So you poured your life into building this thing, now does it work or not? Okay. So this is what is the whole point of usability testing and to do it very early in the circle. So I'll show you an example of a product over here and uh, this is a tea and coffee maker like you see in a lot of uh, offices. So this is something that many offices purchase and keep in their um, you know corner of the office or in their conference rooms or whatever. Now um, we're not going to discuss this in detail but I'm just going to show it to you. I have used this on several occasions, not continuously every day. So I use it and then after several days of not using it, I go back to it again. Every single time, it is a big baffler for me. I stand in front of this machine and I think, how do I pour a cup of hot water in order to make a tea? And it's not just me, right? Most of the people in that context, say we're in a conference together or in a meeting together, many people in that room are standing in front and really struggling and wondering how do I how do I pour a cup of uh, hot water out of this and it's not just pour out if you press the uh, pour out button it doesn't work so don't ask me what the answer is because I don't remember but um, it is a baffling product and uh, so there are uh, several points that I would like to make to you over here why does a you know, when I just want a cup of tea, why does it have to be so complex, right? So uh, that is one part and it is very complicated for me to try and figure out from this, how do I pour out hot water in order to, uh, you know, take my tea bag and put it in the cup and just make a simple cup of tea, right? So I don't know exactly how this works, I don't remember, but the point is that number one, they could have done some simple usability testing. This could, could have been drawn out on a piece of paper and if they had tested it early, they would have known that it's very confusing for people, right? Uh, perhaps I would imagine they didn't do it. 
second thing is and we we are not going to speak about this in in this course but people's memory is poor it's not like when you use something once you're going to remember it for the rest of your life the next time and if it is not intuitive that is if it is intuitive you walk up to it and you just know how to use it but products which are not intuitive i will never remember even though i may use this you know once a year or once every 6 months i will not remember it if it is not intuitive right so um you know uh, again to emphasize the importance of testing for usability it's a simple control panel that could easily have been perhaps uh, you know prototyped on paper and tested before it was released in the market okay so this is an example for you to understand how important it is so that when it's out in the market it's not so complex right okay what is usability testing in a nutshell here's you can see is a paper prototype and here is uh, you know a, a fake of the keypad um so this this user is trying to test this product so get representative users this is what usability testing means get people who are representative of the people you're trying to test okay so if you're trying to test someone who is an avid uh, movie goer remember one of the personas we talked about so bring someone like that okay ask them to perform typical tasks with your design ask them to do things with your design okay so um, for example for that movie goer you might say that you know you you uh, just went and watched uh, so and so movie and uh, you're interested in um, in um, buying the songs for it or you're interested in buying the t-shirts for the movie so can you show me how you will do it okay so that's a task all right shut up and let the users do the talking keep mum remember active listening that we talked about during our research the same applies over here your focus is not to speak to the user and tell them about your design it really doesn't matter your entire focus is to get from the user what their notion their mental model is of the design and therefore how they think it works and therefore how they start behaving with it expecting it to behave in a certain way do not prompt them um again it's in caps because it's a very difficult thing when we've created a design and we know how it works and you're watching someone who's struggling with it the most natural tendency is to say just press that or just click on this or just uh, you know um uh, turn the knob over there and these are the kind of things that come naturally so you have to resist that urge you have to keep your mouth shut and not prompt them find out and see how they go right so uh, usability testing is done in various contexts uh, we will speak about a usability lab but it's also done in the field in this case remember the fruit wala example that i gave you this is their rough cut paper prototype and this is what they've taken to the fruit wala and they're trying to understand um you know how how it works now this is the english version what they took actually for testing was done in hindi so um uh you know this is and you can see that they've taken it to the context of the user this is his fruit stall and they're trying to this is one of the people in the design team and he's trying to um you know have a conversation with him and try and get him to um perhaps do some of the these kind of tasks so a task in this situation was um you know uh, ramesh has returned um the 432 rupees that he owed you and now you want to uh, change that in your khata can you show me how you will do it or you want to open a new khata for um sheila aunty who lives uh, on the top floor of the next building how will you do that okay um and uh, you know how how would you upload uh, the uh, phone number and address or whatever it is so these are different tasks this is what we call tasks okay and in usability testing we give these tasks to the user now where do these tasks come from they come from the um things that we have in our persona the 
details that we have in our scenarios. We've built our scenarios around what the user's goals, motivations, intents are. And based on that, we build our tasks. So let's now try and understand why we do usability testing. Okay, why is it so important to do usability testing? And I would like to emphasize over here that it says it's all about performance and not preference. So it's not about creating your, uh, your prototype and then giving a demo to the user, demonstrating it to the user and saying, do you like it? And uh, what is the user likely to say? Yes, I like it. Because they have no idea what happens inside it, right? Uh, or rather, you know, when they start to work with it, okay? So, why usability testing? To get a great service or a site or a product, you have to test. Why? Because nobody gets a design right the first time. That's just life, right? You cannot get a design right the first time. Even the most brilliant people, right? Um, so. Um, even if, even if you think someone's come up with a sudden concept, it usually has been progressively refined over time, right? So at least the majority of people are not able to do a great design on the first shot. So as a designer, you soon know too much. So this is, you know, if you're thinking, why can't I test it? I am a user. For example, I watch television. Why can't I test it, right? you are a designer of that product, you know too much. You know too much about the back end of it, right? So your opinion is irrelevant. Not only is it irrelevant, it really do, you know, doesn't matter what your opinion is, it's also misleading. Because if you are able to use this, and we go on the assumption that because you're able to use it, the rest of the population can use it, that is completely misleading and wrong. It is important to um, test it with actual people, more like the, uh, the actual the people who will finally use the product. Testing is meant to refine and increase the chances of success of the design. So as, as I said earlier, as you refine it, you are removing all the things that don't work early enough so that later you don't have to face them when it's so much more expensive. And nothing beats a live audience reaction. Until something is, you know, in front of the real people, uh, it, it, it just is incomparable to um, anybody else who you might test with. Okay? Now, what I'm going to show you before I speak to you about usability testing is a video. And this is by Steve Krog, who is the author of the book, um, that I mentioned to you called Don't Make Me Think and also he's uh, written another book thereafter called uh, Rocket Surgery Made Simple. Okay? So this is a vi uh, video that will show you how usability testing is conducted. Thank you for volunteering. Appreciate it. So you're going to talk into this mic. You're going to, you have the mouth and uh, the screen is yours. So uh, I'm going to read from the script. And I'm just going to do a time check here. Okay, we're good. Uh, so, uh, hi, Brian. My name is Steve, and I'm going to be walking you through this session today. Uh, before we begin, I have some information for you, and I'm going to read it to make sure that I cover it. Uh, you probably already have a good idea why we asked you here. We would have told us during the phone call while we recruited him. Um, but let me go over it again briefly. Uh, we're asking people to try a website that we're working on so we can see whether it works as intended, and the session should take off. First thing I want to make sure right away is that we're testing the site, not you. Um, you can't do anything wrong here. In fact, it's probably the one place today where you have to worry about making mistakes. As you use the site, I'm going to ask you as much as possible to try to think out loud to say what you're looking at, what you're trying to do, and what you're thinking. This will be a big help to us. Okay. Um, also, please don't worry, you're going to hurt our feelings. We're doing this to improve the site so you need to hear your uh, reactions. Do you have any questions as we go along? Just ask them. Um, I may not be able to answer them right away since we're interested in how people do when they don't have someone sitting next to them. Um, but if you still have questions when we're done, I'll try to answer them. And if you need to take a break at any point, just let me know. You may have noticed the microphone. There would be a microphone sitting here on the desk. With your permission, we're going to record what happens on the screen and our conversation. Uh, recording will only be used to help us figure out how to improve the site and 
and won't be seen by anyone except the people working on the project and help me to that. Uh, also, there are a few people uh, from the Web Design team observing this session in another room. They can't see us just the screen. And if you will, I'm going to ask you to sign a simple permission form for us. This says we have your permission to record you, and the recording will always be seen by the people working on the project. At which point I would give Brian a thing, and he would sign it with basically two sentences that says that. It says uh, we have your permission to record you. And uh, so at this point, I would. Probably, probably would be running a screen recorder like Camtasia on this PC just to have a record of it, and I would run that in the background. So I would start that at this point, because up until that point, I didn't have his permission to record it. Really oh, sure, please, go, go for it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that's always a good, always a good thing. Yeah. Uh, great. Okay, and you're going to talk into this mic, so you should be yes, the car. Yeah, you can stand here. Um, Alright, so, uh, you have any questions so far? No. Okay, good. Before we look at the site, uh, I'd like to ask you just a few quick questions. Sure. Um, first, what's your occupation? What do you do all day? I'm a developer. Developer? PHP. A PHP developer, okay. On what, what kind of, what's the end product like? All kinds of things? All kinds of all things. All kinds of things. Real estate. Oh. <laughs> Um, roughly how many hours altogether, just a ballpark estimate, would you say you spend using the internet, including web browsing and email at work and home, so everything? 80. 80 hours. Okay. Uh, and what's the rough split between email and web browsing? What percentage? More of one or the other? Yeah. 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 Definitely 90% browsing. 90 percent browsing. Oh, okay. Okay, great. And what kinds of sites are you looking at when you browse the web? Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> she is not the operator. Uh, work or business, either. Yeah, uh, marketing, development. Uh, like I said, real estate. Real estate. Okay. Do uh, you have any favorite websites? No. No. <laughs> okay. That's, that's Google. Google. Yeah. Uh, Google's a very common answer. Very common answer. Yeah. Okay. All right. Great. We're done with questions. We can start looking at things. So I'm going to reach in here and open up. Uh, this page and uh, um, I uh, first I'm going to ask you to look at this page and tell me what you make of it, what strikes you about it, whose site you think it is, what you think you can do here, and what it's for. Just look around and do a little narrative. You can scroll if you want to, but don't click on anything. Don't click on anything. Yeah. 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 Um, I'll notice it's got an interactive map. Uh, oh, they get to see what yeah, I'm they can see it. Yeah. Um, I see it's for downtown Minneapolis. Uh, I see where I can see uh, different things I might be looking for, like business and banking or parking. Mm -hmm. um, Skyway Sampler is already out there. Uh, and I assume I can scroll around and click on things to see where I want to go. Okay. Sure what else you want from me. Okay, no, no, that's that's great. Uh, what is what is what do you think Skyway refers to, or what is Skyway? Well, since I'm from Maine, um, <laughs> and I've heard of the Skyway, you're so right. I do know what it is. Okay. Yes. 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 Okay. So, uh, and why do you think you would go to this site? Well, if I'm not from the area, I might use it to help me get around the city. Okay. Yeah. All right. Great. All right. So now I'm going to ask you to try to do a specific task. Cool. Um, and uh, uh, I guess as much as possible, it'll help us if you can try to think out loud as you go along. So what I want you to uh, assume is that you're staying at the Grand Hotel in Minneapolis, and you, uh, uh, you're, you're going to meet a friend at Macy's. At yeah, Macy's? At Macy's. Yes. And, you, and it's nine degrees off. <laughs> and uh, your friend told you that you can get there with, through the Skyway without going outside. So I want you to go ahead and use uh, this to figure out how you would get there. Well, right away, I, I don't see any, oh, I do see a thing for hotels. I might find out where I'm at, for starters. I don't know what hotel I'm at. Oh, I'm sorry, you're at, you're at uh, Grand Hotel. Grand Hotel. Yeah. So, um, I might click on hotels. You want me to okay, I did, just do whatever you would do. All right. Yeah. And it'll show me the hotels, but I don't know which one's Macy's, so I'll probably go up here and search. I'm not from the Grand Hotel. Right, okay. Oops, we're out of time. It's a nice keyboard, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
and obviously it's pointing me out here, I guess it's the one underneath here. And then I'm going to find out, okay, I know where I'm at now, so now I have to find out where Macy's is. Okay. So I'm, if I was on Google Maps, I'd say directions, okay. but I don't see anything here for directions at first. Do you? <laughs> Okay, but that's what you're looking for. I'm looking for direction. Okay. Oh, there we go. Skyway directions, meet me here. I might go to Macy's now, is what I would do. Okay. Oops. Uh, I didn't click. Sorry. You were trying to click on that field. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it opened another app. <laughs> there we go. We've got, we got a sloping mouth surface yeah, here. Yeah. All right. M A C Y Macy's. There we go. So I click on Macy's and I do my search, and I'm over there. So now um, I, I see that I was over here, so now I would be able to figure out how to navigate this okay. way. And, and, and how would you do that? Go ahead and do whatever you would do. How would you do it? Well, I mean, it does have a link here for sideway directions. Okay. I'll click on that. Oh, now it has a prompt. Ah, so I don't know if I can type in here or what. Yeah, I can. Okay, whatever you do, try whatever you do. Yeah, yeah. Grand Hotel. I could probably stop there, but I might see if anything else is down there. No, okay. Then I should go. So, I guess these are buildings in between here that could be going building to building. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure what else you want from me. Oh, if no, I was no, over no, here, no. I'd be saying, okay, I want to go over here. Okay. Navigate through. So okay. anything else you would do? I mean, you think you would, would you print this map out, or what do you think you would do if you were? Probably, like probably, you know, okay. All right. Um, so that was how a usability testing looks and feels like. So there are several things that you must have noticed. Um, of course, this is with a live product, and it was to give you a, a feel for it. But you must have noticed that Steve Krogh, the person who was the moderator, the one who was conducting the test, and then the other person was the participant, right? Who is the, the customer. So he had what he called a script, and uh, what that means is, uh, you know, he had instructions written there, what he has to tell him. Um, we will talk about that. You must have noticed also that he told him, please think aloud. As you go forward, think, tell me what you're thinking. Then you must have also noticed where he told him, this is not about you, we are trying to test the design, we are not testing your abilities, so there is nothing right or wrong that you are going to do, right? You must have noticed also that he asked him a few initial questions, where are you from, what do you do? And then um, he gave him a real open-ended kind of opening into the product, where he said, look around and tell me what you make of it. He did not explain to him, this is a product that does this and then it does that and it can also do this, but he said, look and tell me what you make of it. So, trying to get the users, um, you know, in initial and intuitive feedback as to what this thing is and what it possibly does. Now, um, for those of you who may not be <coughs> familiar with Skyway, Skyway is basically a covered walkway that is uh, built in a lot of cities with very cold climate, uh, when it is harsh weather to walk outside. So, Minneapolis I believe has about 11 miles of skyway that people can walk around the city and it is covered like a covered corridor. Um, then you must have noticed about the task, right? Um, where he, he said, I'd like you to imagine that you're living in the Grand Hotel. Remember, it's all fake. He's not staying at the Grand Hotel. He told him, imagine that you're staying at the Grand Hotel and imagine you want to go to Macy's. Now, tell me what you would do. And you must have also noticed that uh, uh, the uh, participant was asking him, uh, is this what I should do or uh, I don't see anything. Do you see anything? But you must have noticed that the moderator, which is Steve Krogh, did not answer him. Instead, he told him several times, do whatever you would do. Do whatever you would normally do. And you must have also noticed that he was not helping him. He was not saying, okay, why do not you look here, why do not you look there. 
So this is not a demo, this is not a situation where you are explaining the product to the person, but what you are doing is you are trying to find out whether they understand your product or not, right? Whether they, you know, are able to perform with your product or not. As you can see, it was not about preference. He didn't ask him, did you like it? If he had said, did you like it, the uh, participant very likely would have said, yeah, it looks really nice. Uh, and then you have learned nothing about what works, what doesn't work, right? In, um, uh, in this particular case, you saw that he wasn't able to first uh, find um, uh, notice. He wasn't able to notice that there was a direction section over there. Uh, instead, what he, um, you know, he said that I might look up on Google. So when there is this Skyway map available and you are looking on the Skyway map to find how to go, obviously the Skyway will have details um, that you want to know as you are walking along the Skyway. Uh, you do not want this person going to Google for directions, right? So if that product uh, is, is the product you expect your uh, participant to use, um, or your, your customers to use actually, you would want them to figure it out on your product. So that was one of the things that just as an example, something that the user did not get right away. Okay? And uh, so th there were some others, but that is a summary of what a usability testing really looks like. Okay? And uh, now, um, you know, we, that we have understood why it is important to test with people, we will move on to understanding uh, how do you test your design with people. Okay?